Welcome to Hip Mojo. This is show eight. My name is Ashkan Karbas Rushan. And I'm CT Moore. And this week we're going to go a little bit more in depth to some things we touched on last week. Uh, we're going to talk about the fifth year anniversary of the Google YouTube deal. That's right. Uh, we're going to take a look at Facebook credits. Yep. And then in the lightning round, we got a few things lined up for Yahoo, Hewlett Packard. Yeah, lots to talk about also about Microsoft as well as Google. So let's get right to it. October 9th, 2011 is the five-year anniversary of the $1.65 billion deal. Cha-ching. Yeah. In fact, when it closed it after, because it was a stock deal, uh, it was actually even more than that, but that's just a little footnote. Okay, so five years into this deal, I'm going to read you a quote from none other than Mark Cuban. He said, quote, I said it was a huge mistake back then, and I still think it's a huge mistake. All YouTube is is Google subsidizing the bandwidth of every individual in the world, end quote. Now, what makes that even more interesting is that Mark Cuban sold Broadcast.com for $5.7 billion to Yahoo in the you know, pre-dot-com bubble days. So, is Mark Cuban right? Uh, I disagree with him completely. I think he's looking at this uh, from a kind of a, a non-tech perspective. You know, if you, if you look at it, Google's the number one search engine in the world. YouTube is number two. That means when they got YouTube, they, they gave themselves a lead in search that is almost impossible to close. Uh, more importantly, they get uh, additional search history on every user. They can target ads a lot better. And uh, let's even forget about video ads. Let's talk about AdWords. There's AdWords all over YouTube videos now. And uh, just the way that that search history can be plugged in to target people on that level, I think it was a huge, huge deal. Yeah, I actually disagree with Mark Cuban as well. But uh, let's just hold off on Mark for a second. I just want to touch on one thing you said. The, whole, the inventory that YouTube gets, sorry, that Google gets through YouTube. I remember one day flipping a switch for something called AdSense for content host, which I had no idea what it was. And our revenue at watch, youtube.com slash watchmojo like tripled. So the revenue that YouTube, and I, I think I'm allowed to say that. I don't think that's any crazy NDA breaking stuff. But basically, so let's say we were making $1 from our YouTube channel. Once we started to run Google ads on our YouTube channel, we started making $3. Those are some big dollars. Those are some big dollars. And in fact, <laughs> some months, that's how much we make. But the point is that that just in of itself recouped a lot of the investment. Now, you know, you always joke about, oh, let me guess, you wrote this article and that article. I remember before. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Yeah, here's another one from the closet. Um, before YouTube sold to Google, we ran some numbers. And, I, you know, I was like, listen, YouTube is profitable. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. YouTube is either profitable or it could be profitable if it turns on display ads. And then years later, after Steve Chen and Chad Hurley sold the company, they actually came out and they opened up their financials and YouTube was making money, like profits, not just revenue. So I think the deal was not bad. Now, without a doubt, no one else but Google, I think, could have subsidized that massive bandwidth. But even like you saw that there's, you know, uh, analysts came out and said even the bandwidth isn't that much because of peering, where basically if one big ass media company has excess bandwidth, then Google can use that to reduce their bandwidth and hosting costs. And you're right. I think just from a marketing perspective, if you compare where Google Video was, which frankly, Google Video was ambitious, but it wasn't really going anywhere relative to YouTube. And, you, you know, and Google just decided to buy them. And I think when you think about even $2 billion, that's nothing. Today, Google is sitting on like $20, $30 billion. And it was $2 billion to close off that much more of the web. You know, they, everyone talks about how Google and Facebook are always in this war to close the web. Well, if you own the number one video destination, you own a huge chunk of the web. Yeah, I want to just now touch on Mark Cuban. I think Mark Cuban is, I love Mark Cuban, great salesman, great business guy. You got to give him credit. You could say he was lucky. I mean, luck and timing are, are as important as, you know, ambition, vision, execution. But the thing that I find is a bit disingenuous in Mark Cuban saying that is, he sells Broadcast.com to Yahoo, he gets stock. And then he basically enters into a caller, which is basically a strategy where as Yahoo shares go down, he's basically unloading those shares. So he's right in doing that from a financial perspective. But I always think that whenever an acquisition goes sour, right now if you type Broadcast.com, you go nowhere but the Yahoo homepage, right? So it's like one company was bought for $5.7 billion in stock, ceases to exist pretty quick. Lee, you could blame Yahoo, which is what sellers always do, but I think as a seller, you have a responsibility to make sure that the company that somebody buys is successful. Now, take a look at YouTube. YouTube, yes, Steve Chen sort of tuned out pretty quickly. I think he went to start playing golf and, and investing. Chad Hurley stuck around, and even though Google brought in you know, professional managers, Google really not just invested um, money. I actually think Google really changed their philosophy. Instead of just thinking that, oh, the, the algorithm and mathematics and technology will 
make this uh, a money maker, they really have evolved. You know, I've outlined so many things that you know, YouTube should be doing better. And to give credit to, to Google, they're almost doing all of those things. And, and considering YouTube is so massive and there's all these rights issues and privacy issues, you really have to give them credit. So I don't, I don't really agree with Mark Cuban actually on any level. Um, I think at the end of the day, it was $2 billion in stock, which is like, who cares? It was like a drop in the ocean. Right. And uh, even from a revenue model perspective, you hear about Hulu uh, serving up four times as many video ads as YouTube. I don't think that matters. Uh, YouTube also has the whole AdWords AdSense plugged in. And uh, I would like to see how much money Hulu is making off ads versus what Google is making off AdWords in YouTube. And one thing, video ads are really intrusive. Users don't want them. Those AdWords ads, they're a little bar at the bottom of the video. You can close them if you want. And more often than not, you end up clicking on them by accident, which is uh, crappy for the advertiser, but you just close the window and move on with your viewing. Uh, final point on this, and then we'll move to segment two. I think that's another really great part of why Google investing in YouTube and you know, taking it in the right direction and not sacrificing the user experience by running pre-rolls nonstop early on is really, really good because that actually forced the big major media companies to invest in Hulu. Hulu makes over 500 million in revenue. Hulu has become sort of you know, the yin to YouTube's yang. Um, and, and I think you know, it sort of one fed off the other. One sort of became master of the super premium content at the top. The other one became the master of the premium sort of torso content, YouTube, in the middle. And yes, there's obviously all the user-generated content at the bottom and the prosumer uh, content that's become very popular. But, but in the end, I think YouTube, Google's investment and vision in growing YouTube helped Hulu become what Hulu became because it became such a foe. When you look at all of the YouTube clones, they all shut down or went out of business. Veo went out of business. Rever, we looked at buying uh, Rever, believe it or not, when, when Rever was deciding to sort no of way. fire sell. Yeah, um, but, but that didn't happen because I said, you know, we're, we're in a leadership position in you know, professionally produced content. Why do I want to get my ass kicked by YouTube as a clone, et cetera? So it didn't make sense. Well, that, that's what Google did by buying YouTube. They, they, they took online video and they forced it mainstream really early. And like, let's face it, companies like Vivo would not exist or succeed without YouTube. Yep. That would make a great uh, segment for an upcoming show, which is just looking at Vivo as a case study. But today we're going to shift gears and come back and talk about Facebook right after this. Thank you.